And then as you're like, because when you start sharing your story like day five, they will lean forward. And when they lean forward, then you say like, well, and you add your, you add more professional examples with a little bit more professional vocabulary because like you need to warm them up so they lean forward and they will lean forward. You kind of, oh, okay, now I can talk about congruency and concurrency and, and uh, stability and stuff like that. And, and they're like, oh, damn, and she's smart too. So like, if you are curious what it is like to work with me as a coach, this episode is perfect for you. In this episode, you are going to see behind the scenes what's going on in my coaching sessions. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know in the comments what resonated with you. And if you are interested in coaching with me, grab the link in my bio or send me a DM message and let's keep conversation going. So what is important is to have a very fine balance between you start telling your story as your interviewers are five-year-old children. Like really simple, inviting, friendly, without um, complicated words and more so like you are talking to a friend in a way. Like you start sharing your story. And then as you're like, because when you start sharing your story like they five they will lean forward and when they lean forward then you say like well and you add your um you add more professional examples with a little bit more professional vocabulary because like you need to warm them up so they lean forward and they will lean forward, you kind of, oh, okay, now I can talk about congruency and concurrency and, and uh, stability and stuff like that. And, and they're like, oh, damn, and she's smart too. So like, that's kind of how it works. Like, can I give you an, a little bit of an, an example? Let's say when people ask me, so the first, like the first question that people ask me and normally people ask uh this question is like, tell me about yourself. So I go something like, so like, for, like when we, when we say hello, I try to be super informal and super friendly. And I, I, I have bubbly personality. It, you don't have to be like all bubbly and loud. And, but I normally say like, Hey, how are you doing? I said like, I'm doing really well. And you know, like the, I, if it is Friday, I said, I'm excited. It's Friday. And like, or let's say it's Monday. I would ask, how's, how's Monday treating you? Do you like Mondays? Like Mondays are not my favorite day of the week. So, so something a little bit more personal. So it's an icebreaker. So uh, whatever it might be like Tuesday, like I would normally say something, well, we survived Monday. So it's Tuesday. It's already better. <laughs> the week is already better. So something like something silly, something funny, like kind of like quirky, kind of small talk. Like I hate small talk, but like elevator talk, elevator conversation, right? Like dad jokes. So um, and uh, then when they start like, OK, like Eugene, you ready? Let's start like let's start the conversation going. So they would ask me, like, tell me about yourself. And I said, well. I would start with something like, I would start with my professional experience. I said, I'm a senior iOS developer. I, and um, instead of, um, instead of uh, kind of going super technical, I said, I love scaling mobile apps and I love serving teams. I said, help uh, my team to improve user experience, like expedite the turnaround. And um, uh, um, and uh, modernize the app with Swift UI. Also, like I'm very passionate about coaching and helping others and building communities. So I, uh, this is something that I do outside of my nine to five and uh, uh, care of in at Nordstrom. I coach and I mentor a lot of engineers, and we 
I've seen great results from my work. And as a senior engineer, I think it's it's super valuable. It is important. And it's so like, like you see, like I'm kind of like I I'm keeping it simple. And I'm kind of, I'm, uh, I'm keeping it really, really conversational. So I'm avoiding really big words. I'm avoiding um, anything complicated. So, and then like normally when they dive in and so like, okay, like this is great. So how do you, and then depends on the, uh, and then as the conversation goes forward, so I will bring up a nudge a little bit with uh more serious questions so like my facial expressions will change i would get more serious i would i would get more focused and uh i i would i and um i will always tell a story right i would just answer for example tell tell me about a time when you had a conflict with your coworker. i wouldn't just say I had a disagreement with a new developer because, like, you know, something boring. I would say something like, oh, this is a really great question. First of all, I think conflict's not necessarily a bad thing. So let me tell you a situation, a story when me and my coworker, like, wouldn't just see eye to eye how to implement a feature. And I would go and say, like, so my stand was this. His that was that we disagreed, but we didn't fight and we kept it professional and we we really we tr- like we really did a good job not to not not to make it personal. So because it is professional, so it, it we like we're developers, we are we're highly opinionated people. So what we did, we actually put together like pros and cons list on the whiteboard. And uh, we decided to actually combine our solutions together because I had many great points. He had many great points. So, and because I was not on board implementing it in the way that was suggested, neither he was on board with my solution. So we decided to implement the best part of his solution and the best part of my solution together. So, and it, and it was actually a perfect architectural feel for our app. This is how we like. This is how we resolve this conflict. So, like, it's a little bit more interesting, and uh, um, it's it's about like it's it's about storytelling, and uh, kind of give you a little bit more example of, uh, of uh, storytelling. Um, you know, and it's gonna sound a little bit cheesy, but go and watch my live streams because I I tell story. I, I use storytelling all the time i'm always telling the stories i'm always bringing examples and um how i model that like it's 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 best to see that in action versus um like just giving you a theory how like how to do that because but the point is it's just you always telling a story even when they ask you for like something really really technical let's say um i don't know let's say memory links so and you can say oh memory links happens when we do have strong dependencies and strong dependencies sometimes happen in closures so this is why we have to declare weak and like weak cell because let me tell you an example I work with a feature and I work with a bug when we had a memory link and I had to d- troubleshoot it. So the root cause was laying in a part when in the closure, we didn't have weak self. And back to what I was saying, closures, it's like, a, 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 uh, it's a reference type, not the value type. So, and because it is a ref- like reference type and not value type, we had memory link there. So the fix was really easy. Just put a weak self there. And like one line of code was a simple solution for very bad memory link in our app. So you, you see like we like you you brought up, uh, I, I just um, emphasize my knowledge that I know closures. So closures are like reference type and not value type. So like, and they were like, oh yeah, right. Like 
Yeah, that's that's right. So you probably educated them right there and then. So they probably won't ask you that question, like reference set versus value type. They might, but you already you already position yourself as a leader, and also you told like more or less interesting story how it is like how in practicality you face those issues 